Hi, what we want to do in this session is have a brief look at wisdom as an international uh, genre. If you look in your Bibles, you'll see in 1 Kings 4, uh, verse 29, not on the screen, how it summarizes the fame of Solomon. God gave Solomon very great wisdom, discernment, and breadth of understanding as vast as the sand on the seashore. Wonderful hyperbole to speak about the greatness and the breadth of Solomon's wisdom. And then I want you to notice this, that is on the screen, uh, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 30, 31, so that Solomon's wisdom surpassed the wisdom of all the people of the East and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all other men, wiser than Ethan, the Ezraite, Heman, Tarkal, and Dura, the sons of Mahol. And his fame was in all the surrounding nations. It's interesting that Solomon, uh, Solomon and his wisdom are compared to the wisdom of the people of the east, which is Mesopotamia, uh, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, and Egypt. And the interesting thing is that it's not a negative com uh, comparison. When the Bible compares the worship of Yahweh to the worship of the other nations, the, uh, the, the comparison is always negative. But here, Solomon is favorably compared to these people to show that he was the wisest of all people. And the fact that the wisdom he had was uh, wiser than theirs, but the fact that there was wisdom in these other nations was recognized. Uh, incidentally, the names, the other names there, uh, it seems, are the temple musicians and the temple singers. And it seems that these also were part of the wisdom tradition. Now, I'd like you to compare proverbs which have been found in archaeology with proverbs that we have in our Bible. Notice the beginning of the teaching which a man made, has made for his son. He says, hearken to my voice and do not neglect my word and do not despise what I want to say to you. Compare that to Proverbs 4, 1, verse 1. Hear, O son, a father's instruction, and be attentive, that you may gain insight, for I give you good precepts. Do not forsake my teaching. Notice the similarity. This cry that we have is in almost every chapter at the beginning of Proverbs, an exhortation for a, a, a son to listen to his father's instruction, and you'll find on the left a very similar Notice this comparison, do not set your heart on riches, for there is no one who knows fate and fortune. Compare that to Proverbs 11, 28. Whoever trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like a green leaf. So with this, we see this comparison, how it's a little bit different, but both speaking about riches and the danger of trusting in uh, another one, do not stretch out your hand against an old man, do not speak first to a great man. And we compare that to uh, Proverbs 25, 6. Put not thyself forward in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. In other words, the way you conduct yourself and, uh, and honor uh, other people. Similar kinds of proverbs. What is interesting is the proverbs on the left were translated from Egypt. And uh, they were translated from the hieroglyphics and on the screen there you'll see the uh, approximate date of those particular proverbs. Very similar to what we have in our Bible. Very similar. Now what is really interesting is the section of Proverbs from uh, Proverbs 22, 17 to 24, 34, where it says, 
the sayings of the wise and uh, a subheading, further sayings of the wise. Uh, interestingly enough, these proverbs are known to have come from Egypt. Uh, they were from the wisdom of Menemenos, one of the pharaohs of Egypt. And uh, as they have been found in archaeology, the, the uh, set of proverbs in Egypt are so very similar to the set of proverbs we have in our Bible. And the ones in Egypt are older than Solomon, and so it would seem that when Proverbs was compiled, the Proverbs of Solomon compiled, along with other Proverbs, it was fitting, it was felt to be fitting that this wisdom of Amenemenop would be included in this selection and this book on wisdom too. But what is interesting is it's not a straight copy, but rather there has been some adjustments and changes with a focus on Yahweh. And in this section, the law, the word Lord, which is, is uh, Yahweh, the I am uh, that uh, Moses met in the wilderness, the word Lord is mentioned five times in this section. So it's almost as if the Proverbs uh, were taken from Egypt, uh, they were cleansed and, and sorted, and uh, maybe uh, uh, references to idolatry removed and incorporated in their Bibles because there's a recognition that wisdom is wisdom. And wisdom is wisdom from whatever source it would come from. And so we can see the international nature of particular genre. And, uh, and it would seem that these collections of Proverbs had a, a particular focus, a particular goal, and that is uh, that they were put together as a training manual for young men and probably, particularly, for government roles. And so there would be this selection of proverbs, this selection of wisdom that was put together, and that is why repeatedly there's this exhortation for the, the son to listen to his father, for the young man to listen to the wise person. So wisdom can be imparted to someone when they're young, so they will grow up living a, a full and uh, a satisfying life uh, that would be prospering and healthy, and they would live well. And it's interesting that our book of Proverbs is more than just an anthology of, of Proverbs. <coughs> Excuse me. It's more than just a, a, a collection of Proverbs put together in no particular order, uh, but rather it would seem to have that same goal. In chapter 1, verse 1, we see an introduction. Uh, in verse 1 there, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. And then verse 2 through 6, we get the purpose of the book. It's for learning about wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for gaining instruction in wise dealing, righteousness, justice, and equity. I mean, who doesn't want that? to teach shrewdness to the simple. And in Proverbs, when the word simple is used, it doesn't mean mentally deficient. What it means is someone who lacks wisdom and needs it. To teach shrewdness to the simple, knowledge and prudence to the young. But it has benefits for older people too, verse 5. Let the wise also hear and gain in learning and the distress and and the discerning acquire skill to understand a proverb and a figure and the words of the wise and their riddle. In other words, the purpose of proverbs is that there will be an impartation to, uh, of wisdom and particularly to young people. And I believe that wisdom is such, uh, the book of Proverbs, excuse me, is an underused and undervalued book, especially for young people. These first chapters, 1 through 9, there's a focus on two things you may have noticed. One is easy sex and easy money, and the dangers that come from both of those. The first thing after the introduction is a, uh, is a call for a young person to 
choose their friends wisely. Uh, the, the first thing that's spoken about, chapter 1, 8 through 9, 19. Tremendous uh, and, and, and needed wisdom for a young person who's starting in life. But as an older person, I testify to the richness of this book. 